Maria from Low Kick MMA, and I am joined today by TJ Brown. TJ, thank you so much for joining me. Hey, thank you for having me. You had a crazy fight this past weekend um, at USC Vegas 25. And, you know, it was kind of really cool listening to you in, in the post fight, just kind of talking about some of the things that you endured on top of the fight. So I kind of want to start by asking you about something that really stuck out to me. Um, you know, it's the beginning of May, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, and you said you know, a considerable amount of time talking about how important getting your mental health um, right and you working with a sports psychologist in preparation for this fight. So can you talk to us a little bit about kind of what what made you realize that that was going to be what was best for you to actually start working with with someone? Oh, um, yeah, you know, th this game is, is at least 90% uh, mental, you know, uh, and, and for me, it's, uh, it's, it's been a determining factor on how well I perform in, in the, in the octagon as, as well as, you know, it's important. The big reason I got this for psychologist was to help with my overall mental health as well. Uh, you know, depending on how you are in the mindset that you're in can factor your performance and, and your overall well, well being and, you know, I, I had throughout my career did some research on sports psychology and just I, I knew the importance of it, you know, but uh, it wasn't until losing uh, those two fights before this one that I was like, man, I need I really need to take this serious. I need to I need to hire someone on And That's when I found Lauren. And man, she she's not only helped me with the fight game, but but she's also taught me skills of applied to, to life, you know, and, and uh it's it's just great, and I, and I think it's something we need to, as athletes and as, as people, just make it more normal that it's okay to, to discuss mental health and depression and things like this are real, and, and everybody deals with them, you know. And mm -hmm. I, I was kind of brought up in a time where, with my family, you didn't really talk about your emotions, like you know, you just put that stuff yeah. back, and you was tough, you know. And I, I'm proud to be tough, you know, like I'm very tough, uh, proud person, but at the same time, you know. Uh, it's nice to have a little bit of help and, and just to understand why you're feeling the way you're feeling and, and how to manage those skills and how to manage those thoughts. And, you know, it's not just help my fight, my fight game, but it's also help my overall uh, life in general. That's amazing. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because I know that, like, once you start really embracing the idea that, like, you know, we go to the doctor for a checkup, we go to a dentist, you know, to get our teeth checked. And when you start approaching your mental health with that same type of attitude, it really does affect everything in your life, but, you know, you're a father. How do you see that kind of changing how you interact with your son and kind of the lessons that you give your son from what you've learned? Well, you know, it gives me the ability uh, to, 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 to break the link. And what I mean by that is you see a lot of times, a lot of things pass down generation to generation, whether it's a negative attitude, whether it's, it's uh, alcoholism or whatever it is, but you know, the, the, the things that I'm facing, I'm able to nip them in the bud now so that they're not passed down to him. And also, like, when challenges come his way, you know, I have a more more intelligent approach on how to deal with them versus, you know, blowing off the handle or ignoring the situation, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, it's huge as a father, you know, and, and these coping skills that I've, that I've been taught are, are really uh, helping him as well. No, that's amazing. And so, you know, again, you know that this is well, this was one big piece of your preparation for this fight. But during your kids, was there anything else that you really, really tried to focus on and coming in against uh Michael, who's a pretty dynamic fighter? Was there any any other real area of focus for you? Yeah, uh, my focus, you know, I, I try not to get caught up in, in the result. You know, I, I try to focus on what can I do that I can perform at the best of my ability? You know, I, when you get caught up in, 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 in worrying about the, the end factor, the winning or losing, it can be a very stressful thing to think about. You know, you can, you can really uh, drive yourself crazy. But what I tried to focus on is what can I do so where I can perform the best of my abilities? What can I do that I put on the performance of my life? And, 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 and Doing that, what, what I tried to do is, is try to uh, find my game. I wanted to go in this fight and funnel him in uh, into positions where I'm strong. You know, uh, so much of this game is being able to identify who you are as a fighter. Just like in life, you want to identify who you are as a person. And 
And so I'm saying this to say my main focus was figuring out who I am as a fighter and make sure I go into this fight, putting him in, in positions to where I can perform at my best. And so in, in doing that, who are you? Like if, if, I think that for a lot of fans, especially for a lot of newer fans, they don't know TJ Brown, right? They're, they're just finding right, out. Right. So, you know, who are you as a fighter? What did you discover about yourself in preparing and then obviously going through that war on Saturday? Right, right. You know, uh, one thing that that, that, that is that, that has been consistent in my career is I am a dog. You know, I, I can take fights into the deep waters. I can drown people. You know, it's a place that, that I really thrive, you know, uh, my head isn't thankful for it, but, uh, you know, I, that's one thing, you know, I, I don't think I was given like some super athletic abilities. I wasn't, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I have a heart of a line. You know, I have, I have this will and dog inside of me that, that uh, has really got me through a lot of fights. And, and you talk about what kind of fighter I am stylistically is, man, I'd say my best attribute is my boxing. You know, you, I was able to display some great boxing techniques in that last fight as well as hit some of my good wrestling. So I'd say that's who I am as a fighter. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's, let's talk about this fight. And it was, to say that it was a war, I think is almost an understatement. Like you guys were going at it. Um, yeah. A lot of us, you know, expecting that there would be some fight of the night bonuses coming your way. Yeah. Uh, but you guys didn't get the fight of the night bonus. Like, People about that. What did you think about that when you saw, you know, Dana go through the through the bonuses and your names weren't up there? Yeah, you know, I, you know, my manager, all my coaches, everybody, we we really thought we had it in the bag. You know, I, I was super excited and and man, who could deny that we 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 weren't fight of the night? So when it happened, I'd be lying if I was saying I was a, wasn't a little upset. You know, not getting it, but. I had to remind myself just to be grateful that I'm in this situation, able to do what I love, and and I got the win, you know. So, uh, although it was heartbreaking not getting that 50 Gs, you know, uh, right. I, I had to remind myself to be grateful and thankful for the position I'm in, and and, and that we did get the win. Absolutely, and you know, looking at your at, at your uh, career thus far, I know that you say that you consider yourself, you know, a really good striker, and obviously you're going to take advantage of of your wrestling skill. But, you know, there's no secret that the majority of your wins have come from submission. Um, you know, there towards the end of the fight, it looked like you could have possibly have had an ankle lock. Mark got out of that. You went through yeah. the Kimura. How disappointed were you? Or were you even disappointed that you weren't able to finish the fight with that submission um, you were going for? You know, uh, I wouldn't say I was disappointed, you know, because at the end of the day, I was going for it. You know, you see a lot of guys with fights, just holding position, you know, just holding, looking to get by on points. Like, that's not me. I'm, I'm constantly attacking. And, and I, I, I'm just proud of myself for just going out there and constantly attacking, giving an exciting fight for the fans to watch. And just, you know, always be attacking. You know, you're not going to see a boring fight out of me. When people turn on a T.J. Brown fight, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun to watch. Absolutely. And it was definitely fun to watch. I think that a lot of us were kind of on pins and needles at the end of that to see which way it could have gone because, you know, for many, it could have gone either way. Right. Um, but there are right. there are a lot of people out there that felt that Kamaka did win the fight, that it shouldn't have been yeah, a of decision, and that, that he should have gotten um, the decision. Initially, I remember that when you did your post-fight, Kamaka and victory is in defeat. Uh, but now that a couple of days have passed and you've had some time to reflect, you do still feel like you did enough to actually win the fight. Yeah, so uh, I'll be honest. After the fight, you know, I was like, man, this fight could really go either way. You know, I was proud of my performance. I was proud, I was proud of myself for, for putting my heart on the line and doing my best. I was a bit uh, worried. You know, I didn't know if for sure. It could, I knew it could go either way. But after watching video, I, I believe I won uh, two out of three rounds, and I, I think it was a good decision. I believe I won. Uh, no disrespect to K Kai Kamaka and his team. You know, I, I see I, I've gotten some backlash and, and this and that. And it's like, why aren't the fans just appreciative of me and him going out there, putting our heart on the line and fighting our hearts off? Why can't they just be appreciated and, and be entertained versus downing one of us or, or talking bad about one of us? It, it just blows my mind how – ungrateful uh some some of these fans are yeah it, it is unfortunate because you guys are putting your bodies and everything on the line yeah. uh, there's there's something to be said for that so you know 
just out of curiosity, which two rounds, because you said that you definitely saw if you won two out of three, which rounds would do you feel that you won? Which one do you think that Kamaka definitely won? You know, it's tough. You know, I, every one of them could have been uh, a bit of a toss up. You know what I'm saying? I definitely mm -hmm. run round one and then two or three could have could have been been a toss up. You know, you look at round two, I landed more significant strikes, landed a takedown at the end, but he did knock me down. So, I mean, it just right. depends how you how you how you scored. And then, you know, uh, and then round three, I got another knockdown at the very end of the fight. As, as well as and, and look at the stats you know I, I, I outstruck him you know um, and then that last round uh, he had some top control but man I'm attacking on bottom and I'm throwing right. up submissions so man it's hard to judge like uh, you know it's, it's, it's a hard one but, but I do believe I won you know so yeah. it is what it is <laughs> I you about that, just kind of thinking about, you know, breaking down the, the, the stakes of the fight, because a lot of people, they watch the fight, they have an opinion, they move on, right? They don't, they're not in the business, they're not going and looking at the stats and everything else. Um, do you feel that maybe in the, in the circle of public opinion, right, do you think that the fact that you looked like you maybe took more damage than you actually did, could have been one of those things that is influencing people to be like, oh, I don't know if he really won the fight. Like, look at look at how beat up he looked after the fight. Um, yeah. Do you think that that plays into it? I don't know. I mean, he was pretty busted up too. I mean, he was bleeding <laughs> from nose and mouth too. So, you know, you look at damage. Like, he's got some damage on his face as well. So, Absolutely. I don't know. Absolutely. And then one last thing that I want to ask about this. Um, apparently, Kaimaka's team has come out uh, today and uh, made it known that they intend to appeal the decision. Uh, they feel like the one judge was just egregiously wrong in his scoring. Uh, you know, how do you feel about that? What's your reaction uh, to the idea that, that this amazing fight is now being appealed? Uh, I, I think in all reality that uh, I if I wasn't, I'm trying to understand it from their perspective. Um, and, and from their perspective, I can understand being upset, you know, because at the end of the day, we put everything into these fights. People don't understand how much we put into it. So I can understand him being passionate about the loss and wanting to get it overturned. Like, I, I'm, I understand where they're coming from. But, but at the same time, man, uh, I think – I think as a man, you you have to understand this is the fight game, and 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 it, and it, you know, it, it, don't blame it on the judges. Maybe there's something more he could have done to, to win the fight, you know. So instead of instead of looking to, to to make excuses, maybe there's something more he could have done to try to finish me instead of trying to blame the judges. Absolutely. So this was, this was a like I just can't help you saying because it was just such a great fight. This was a war. Um, but how soon do you want to be back in the octagon? Like, what, what's next for you? Uh, hopefully soon. You know, I tell people all the time, I'm I'm no spring chicken. Like uh, I'm at thirty, I turn thirty one at the end of the month. You know, I'm trying to stay busy, so I'm trying to get healed up now and try to get something booked. Awesome. And obviously, you are in one of the most exciting divisions in the UFC right now. Is there anybody in particular you'd like to see? Uh, you know, I, I've actually got my, my mind set on a couple, but I'm, I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna leave that out for now. You know, but uh, I've got my eye on it. But just know, I'm doing my I'm doing my film study right now, and I've got my eye on a couple, so uh, it'll come out soon. <laughs> my job if I didn't push just a little bit. Uh, so, so, so let's push too hard on you giving a name, but are you looking for a ranked opponent at this point? Uh, no, no, actually, no, uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm very conscious of, of where I'm at and where I stand right now. And I've got some work to do to put some more respect on my name, but uh, we're working mm -hmm. our way up. Awesome. And everyone watching, because you got back and you watched the fight, uh, last thing that, that I'll ask you today. Um, is there any particular area after that performance that, you know, you and your team is going back and saying, you know, we really need to, you know, tighten up here, work on this. I didn't look as crisp yeah. in this particular aspect as I would have liked. Uh, I, I think that uh, I could have wrestled more. I think my wrestling's too good for me not to display it more. I should have, I hit an easy takedown on him and I, I should have uh, taken more advantage of that. But 
you know, we're, we're still breaking down film and making adjustments as we speak. Awesome. Well, PJ, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, best of luck. You know, obviously we'll be paying attention to see what happens uh, with the appeal. And we can't wait to see you put on another spectacular performance in the Octagon. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.